now I'm going to cover San Antonio Creek is up in the Baldy area. Um, I had a couple of good, good pictures, but but I actually had a friend send me one a couple couple weeks ago, and I'm going to show you that one. So uh, we're just going to take a, a mountain road up to Baldy Village. Um, I always stop and get a cup of coffee and a, and a blueberry muffin, and then I, I walk up. I haven't fished this stream as extensively as the other ones, but uh, I always get up here about two or three times a year. Um, you can't make this stuff up, guys. <laughs> Baldy Village is kind of a unique place. So uh, right above the church sign, too. I like that. And then this is the other side of the sign. This is even funnier. Beer, wine, bread, guns, ammo, trick-or-treat. <laughs> so, nice little cafe here if you want to go in and have lunch or breakfast. And then this is the watershed. Here's the little town. Here's the, the fishing area up above here. So, there's a, there's a uh, creek off to the side here. These are sensitive waters. We want to be very, we want to be respectful of the water and catch and release. These, uh, these, this is a very thin... This is a very sensitive fishing area is the best way to put it. So. This is one of the turnouts going up. This is before the village, but there's a couple of nice pools right below this. Uh, I seem to spook the more fish that I see in there than I catch. But, <laughs> but uh, if, you, if you go in there and park, uh, and then you can walk down to the area and fish a couple of pools right there. So once again, what are our insects that we're looking for? This stream has... Stoneflies, caddisflies, mayflies, and midges. They're all in there. So I got down in the water, and here we go. This one is very iridescent. I don't know what causes that. I kind of want to go get some larva lace and start tying it up with that. Kind of. Uh, <clears throat> this one just is very green. It's a very pretty color. So, yeah. And then, of course, we got the stoneflies. And like I say, I find these all throughout the San Gabriels, and, and I'm sure. This is big trout candy for them, because whenever I tie in a prince nymph, if they seem to be active, it seems to attract them. So, of course, we got our little little other rock worm here, and a little mayfly. So, this is mostly what I've caught in this area. So, these are little guys. This is specifically below the village, up above it gets a little bigger. Uh, I lost those pictures, but now the next the next picture is meant to get you excited about fishing local waters. All right. I did not catch this. My friend did, and he caught it a month ago. Oh my God. So, I want you to know they're there. Okay? So. Where did you catch Where the that one? I'm not going to tell. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't see this picture and go, wow, I'm going to go fish some local waters, you're in the wrong sport again. Because this, he sent me this, and I went out every weekend. <laughs> What's the lifespan of some of these? I would probably say they're not too big. Unless you get like a big guy who finds a pool, he might live three or four years, I suspect. But there are probably guys who could really answer that question. I don't. So once again, there are rainbows and dry uh, rainbows and brown trout in this creek. It's uh, really roll casting and arrow casting. It's very overgrown. It's it, you know you're not going to get these river run through it casts in there, but you have the opportunity to catch some really nice fish. So I'm going to touch on uh, a little bit about Bear Creek. I have fished it a couple of times. It's a tough area to fish. You're, I would say you need a four-wheel drive or be a good hiker. If you go down from the bottom, it's a four-wheel drive road to get into. You can park and then walk the last quarter, half mile and get to the, get to the water uh, with a pickup truck. But if you're going to go beyond that, you need a Jeep or a good four-wheel drive. So, and up above, it's a, the Glory Ridge Trail is the best access up there that's accessible. There are a couple of, I call them goat trails, but you've got to be a good guy, a good hiker to get down in there. And that's a thousand feet down from the Glory Ridge Trail down to the water. So when I was walking out, I was stopping about every 15, 20 minutes and taking a rest. So, so uh, you can find this stuff online. I don't expect you to write this down, but it's just quickly. You're going to need a map of the Forest Service roads to find this. Um, they are marked. Uh, and, and I'll show you the map now. So you would be coming up here, you get to Seven Oaks, you take this road, come in here, this road, this road, then you break off here. This part is four-wheel drive, but you can park and then walk. And then this is the fishable area. This is the Glory Ridge Trail. This is steep. It can be done. 
The last time I was down there, I went down there, I caught two nice fish and then ran into a hornet's nest and had to get the heck out of there. <laughs> so I, from the bottom, it was all, every time I've gone, it's been archery fishing, and, uh, but I always catch a bunch of little browns. Every time I go, I catch 10 or 12 little brown trout. So this is a very sensitive area. Once again, I, you know, we want to be very respectful of this. We want to catch and release. We want to save this resource so we can come back and it'll be there. Where do you park it in the uh, I, I used to fish this uh, with a friend, and we had a four-wheel drive, and it just dead ends. The road dead ends right near the creek, and you just park and, and walk in. Do you need adventure props for that one? Yeah. Uh, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I would say that all these places you needed adventure pass. And, uh, adventure passes are available at the ranger stations or at liquor stores or gas stations? All of the above. Okay. Turner's, yeah. Sport Chalet. Deep Creek, um, I love Deep Creek, although I don't fish it as much as I want. It's about two and a half hours from here, from the top. <clears throat> you can fish it from the bottom. I only fished it from the bottom once, um, and I wasn't paying attention. My buddy was driving. You have to drive on some desert roads. You can get a map, and you can, and it, and you can see where you need to go. You have to do some research on that. Uh, I, I copied this off of a website. I will tell you, a mile and a half up, there are some hot tubs. This was off a nudist website. <laughs> and, and if you go from the bottom, you may run across nudists wading into these, this area. So uh, I caught some little browns down there, but mostly I have fish from the top. And that's up to Lake Arrowhead. It's pretty easy. It's marked. It, although it is dirt road, you can take a pickup truck up there if you have some decent clearance. And then you can park and walk down. If you have a four-wheel drive, you can get down a little further. Um, and I'll show you that trail soon. So this is up from Arrowhead, Hooks Creek Road, then it end ends, it's dirt. You can fish from Splinter's Cabin all the way down. Holcomb Creek comes in here. This is a nice creek to fish also. In low flows, you can come through. This is kind of a gorgy area. If there's a lot of water, it would be hard to get there. So you could stop <coughs> fish this area, get in and drive down to here, then go to the Devil's Hole. You can fish below Devil's Hole and above Devil's Hole. Uh, there's some nice fishing in there. And uh, usually what I do, the Pacific Crest Trail comes through here. My uh, modus operandi is I, I hit the PCT and I walk down about a mile and then I go over the edge and it's kind of shallower. It's not, it's not straight down. There are some areas where it's straight down, it's shallower. You can work your way down, take your time, and then I walk a mile up to the Devil's Hole. And that takes me about three hours of fishing. So. And these are the, this is the sign that's on the dirt road. And every time you come to a crossing, there's a sign and a thing that says you are here. So it's not that hard, really. So. And now I've reached the top, going down the devil's hole, where it says uh, two-wheel drive, uh, beyond this four-wheel drive. So this is the road. It gets ruddier as you go down. So you, can, you can hike down this. This is the canyon. This is the water. It runs up here. Holcomb Creek is back up this way. And this is where the PCT crosses the road right here. Uh, it didn't come out, but there's a trail down here that goes to the Devil's Hole. You can walk that. It's kind of steep on the way out. Take your time going out if you're not in great shape. You know, you can pull off to the side. During the summer, it gets busy down here with a lot of guys. There are people who ride around here in off-road stuff. But they don't hang out by the river. They're going across the river and, and trails onto the other side. So. Is that over towards, like, Crab Flats? Area? Don't know. No? Don't know the name of that one. Hey, question. Yes. Because uh, that used to be my, my home stomping grounds. Uh, when they had the two fires, uh, it got so ashed out, they killed all the fish. That was about five years ago. Uh, yeah, five or six years ago, seven and years they come ago. Back? Yes, the back? rainbows are all back. The browns are not in the upper reaches. Oh. I don't know about the bottom reaches. I haven't fished that. So around Devil's Hole down, when you take the trail and the back. Yeah. Back up. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's all rainbows at this point. I don't know if the browns are hiding down below and will work their way back up. How but, bigger they well, you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is what it looks like. As you can see, the trail runs up here, and this is all rock down in here. You can work your way through this. Um, you know, it's crawling over rocks in some areas, but it's very doable. Take your time, you know. Uh, getting down the devil's hole in, in that area, but this is what I do. I come down here, and then I get a little further down. This is looking back up, and then right down here is an area where it's not such a bad angle, and I work my way down. And this is the kind of pools you run across. It's 
it's a plungy area and then a nice big long pool plungy area nice big area and this area holds some pretty nice fish i really like coming here i always catch a couple of nice fish every day i go here and here's an example and these these guys are very spotted they don't have the colors and they they lose their par marks very quickly they're very silver beautiful fish and they fight like crazy so and here's another one here's my famous pupa midge he took that one another 12 incher and I imagine the coloring matches the granite very, you know, camouflage, you know, natural selection. You blend in, probably survive a lot longer. So, so <clears throat> once again, I'm down there. I'm digging under the rocks. I'm digging things out and taking pictures of them. Here we go. And this is stonefly like we've seen in all the other streams. The stonefly is through here. This rock, it didn't turn out as well as I liked. It's completely covered with midges completely covered thousands of them so and i know that's a that's a food source and i've i've caught a lot of fish on midges when nothing else seems to be working i'll tie on a midge and so and it's a fish in a stonefly what size do you use uh 16 uh maybe 12 yeah they're not huge stoneflies like you find on the kern but uh it's just tons of yellow sallies up there in the spring and like i say you 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 can fish it any time because they're in the water, but if you see some husks out on the thing, that means they hatched out the night before, the night before, and the fish might be looking for them, so I put on a yellow stimulator. And here's my buddy Rob, and we're fishing another pool. We pulled four or five nice fish out of this little rose. And so there, there's some of the other beautiful waters that I have fished. I don't have a lot of pictures of, but I just want to let you know there's more opportunities out there. I think... Hundreds of small creeks is an over-exaggeration, but there are a lot of creeks, and you can look on there. There's a lot of on the web to look at. Um, you can find information about this. You know, this area has a lot of local water. It's not big water. They're not, for the most part, big trout. If you catch a 12-inch trout on the West Fork of the St. Gabriel, that's your year trout. You know, you should be very proud of that. And, uh, but there are other streams that you can try, and uh, they're in the area, and they're accessible, and they can be gotten to. Uh, I'm a big proponent of getting a, a topo map and following the little squiggly lines that are blue and just going out and seeing what you can see. So, all right. I'd like to thank you all for coming down. And uh, I hope this has been, uh, in a minute, I hope this has been uh, uh, getting you excited about fishing and fishing the local streams. And it's a unique. We need to respect the area. We need to clean up, take a bag. I take a trash bag with me a lot of times and I pick up trash when I'm out there. You know, it's a, but it's, a, it's something that you can do. You can be fishing an hour and a half from here on a, on a day and you can catch those San Gabriel, the uh, West Fork trout. You can walk a mile back or two miles back and you can catch 15, 20, 25 fish on a, on a, warm, on a warm spring afternoon. Just, uh, you know, and I, I don't think you can beat that anywhere around, so.